requirements, um, general eligibility requirements, which is important for you to know. We're going to talk about different financial aid programs. Uh, what happens if you need to withdraw? Hopefully you won't be, you won't have to withdraw from your classes, uh, but if you do, how it's going to affect your financial aid, um, what it means to be on satisfactory academic progress. Uh, and then we're going to talk about how you can use financial aid for other educational expenses, such as books and supplies. Now, before I actually dive into any of these agenda items, I want to talk about something that I think might be on a lot of students' minds right now. And that is something called the Higher Education Emergency Relief Fund. It's what we call HERF. HERF is temporary funds uh, that the government has given colleges and universities that can help students through this pandemic. Uh, we do know this pandemic has affected a lot of students. So they have awarded Houston Community College with $59 million this year to help students, to give to students, to help them with their educational expenses during this pandemic. Now the $59 million has to be spent, meaning they have to be given to students between now and May of next year, May of 2022. So we have a process that's available to all students who are attending their classes. So if you are currently attending classes at HCC right now, these funds are available to you. All you have to do is go in and request them. If you are eligible to request the emergency funds, and all students are, so we really encourage you to do so, what you need to do is you need to look at your emails, look at your HCC emails, and if you're eligible, it will be in your emails. You should have gotten an email either yesterday or the day before, um, and it explains to you how to access the funds. Very easy to do. It's through your My Eagle on the Resources tab, and look for a link that says Emergency Grant Form. And then you just click a few buttons, submit it, and then we will be distributing the funds in this first round on September 15th. If you're not currently attending classes, but your classes are later on in the semester, then we're gonna have a second round in October. So in October, you'll look for an email at the beginning of October, wait for that email that says you are eligible to apply for these funds. And then you don't have to be, you do not have to be on financial aid to request these funds. Any student that's attending classes can request the funds. It's probably going to be about $1,000 per student that we award. Uh, it'll, it'll either go directly to your billing account if you want it, or directly to you in a refund if that's what you request. Um, so again, this is the emergency relief funds. It's available to all students. You ask for the funds through your My Eagle resources tab. Um, if you have difficulty accessing the application, there's a few things you need to do. Change your browser. Um, the, the form doesn't really like Internet Explorer, so try Chrome or Firefox. Clear your cache. If you, if you don't know how to do so, go to our website under the HERF page, and it'll tell you how to clear your cache, clear your computer class, and make sure your pop-up blockers are off. These are all the things that will make it difficult to access the application. So I wanted to talk about that right off the bat because the application to request these funds is going to be open from now until September 10th, next Friday. So make sure you go in and get your share of those funds. That's what they're for. They're for all students that are currently attending class. All colleges and universities had the ability to get these funds. We have gotten them, okay? So I just wanted to get that out there right off the bat before I start talking about all these other things that are going on, because I know that accessing emergency funds uh, for education is in the top of a lot of students' minds. All righty, so let's start, go let's start going through some of these agenda items, um, and I will be answering any questions at the end. Uh, so financial aid services, we're here to help with your financial aid applications. Uh, there's three or four, I should say, four primarily primary applications to apply for different forms of financial aid. Uh, the federal application does require students to be a citizen or an eligible non-citizen. So if you're a citizen of the United States or an eligible non-citizen, you're gonna wanna complete the FAFSA. If you need help, contact us. Contact us through our Zoom lobby. Come into our office to get help or call our call center. We will help you through the application. 
if you are not a U.S. citizen or eligible citizen, eligible non-citizen, if you are an undocumented student or an international student, you can uh, do our TASPA application. Use the TASPA application to give out state aid to undocumented students or uh, institutional grant assistance for uh, our international students. Then we have a foundation scholarship application. Um, the foundation scholarship application is now closed, but it'll open up again next February. So you definitely want to keep an eye out on that. Uh, our emergency aid, I just talked about that for a minute ago. That is available to all students currently attending class. So if you have a later session, you won't be able to uh, uh, apply yet. Uh, and it's a an, uh, request form through self-service through your uh, My Eagle. Then there might be some other applications that are available through outside private scholarships. Uh, many, many organizations, community service agencies, offer scholarships to students, and there's usually a separate application for that. We're here to help you. If you have trouble accessing or completing any of these applications, contact the financial aid office, get on our Zoom lobby. We have a whole team of people that can help you through our Zoom lobby. Um, come into the financial aid office. We will help you um, complete the process. Next form, please. Okay, so here's how you can access us. Uh, this information is also on our uh, website um, under our contact page. So you can call our call center, you can enter our Zoom lobby, you can email us, um, or you can come in in person. These are all the ways that you can access us. We are open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. We also have a chat an automated chat, we call it a chat bot. That's open 24 seven. If you click on that, most of your questions can be answered through our chat bot, which comes up automatically when you go to the financial aid page. Next slide, please. Okay, so one thing you need to know about the free application for federal student aid, what we call the FAFSA. The FAFSA is required for all federal financial aid, the federal Pell Grant, supplemental grant, student loans, work study programs, and also a lot of our Texas state aid programs use the FAFSA. It has to be applied for every year. This is very important. You need to apply every year. Don't wait until the last minute. If you wait until the last minute, if you wait until August 15th for classes that start on August 23rd, you might not be able to have financial aid cover your classes because you don't give us enough time to process the applications. The applications take time. Okay, so make sure you give yourself plenty of time. Application for next fall, fall of 2022, opens up on October 1st. There's no reason to wait. Get it done sooner than later. Uh, the application is open for a long period of time. So for the 21-22 year, which is going on right now, starts in the fall, ends in the summer, that application is open right now. So even if you've started classes and haven't applied for aid yet, there's still plenty of time. And if you apply and you get everything done, say by November, we will make it retroactive. So any classes that you've been attending, if you qualify for financial aid, it'll be retroactive and we will get you your funding. Those that haven't completed the process yet, maybe you have to give us some forms that are required by the federal government or the state agency. Then uh, you can still get those forms done, even if you've paid for your classes or you're on a payment plan, you can still get those done and get your financial aid and you will get reimbursed for anything you paid if you qualify for financial aid. Financial aid application covers fall through summer. Our summer is called a trailer. So for the 21-22 year, it covers fall of 21, spring of 22, and summer of 22. So you have to understand that's the period that uh, an annual application will cover. Next slide, please. Okay, so to qualify for the FAFSA, which is the federal grants and, and most state grants, you have to have completed high school. You have to have proof that you've 
and homeschooled and graduated, you completed your D GED, uh, or you graduated from high school. You also have to be a US citizen or an eligible non-citizen. So students with an alien registration number uh, and they meet the Department of Homeland Security uh, requirements as a legal alien can also complete the FAFSA and qualify. You have to have a valid social security number. If students don't have a social security number, they can't use the FAFSA. They want to use the TASFA to apply for our institutional aid and possibly some of our state aid. Can't be in default on a, on a loan from another school. Or you, um, if you're in default, you got to clear up that default before you can requalify for financial aid. You have to be meeting satisfactory academic progress, which means you have to pass, complete, and pass the classes that you attempt. So. Make sure that you're taking a class load that you can handle, that you can finish successfully so that you can retain your financial aid and you don't lose your financial aid. Now, if you went to other schools and you withdrew or dropped out, you might have something called an unusual enrollment history. So students that go to one school, drop out, and then go to another school and drop out, and then go to another school and drop out, they will lose their financial aid eligibility at any school and all schools. So be careful that you're not hopping from school to school um, and not completing uh, the courses that you attempt because those will affect you in the future. Next slide, please. You have to be a regular student. What does that mean? That means that you have to be seeking a certificate or a degree program. You can't just be taking random classes and, and qualify for financial aid. You have to be enrolled in a degree program. So are you interested in culinary arts? Are you interested in um, hairdressing? Are you interested in nursing or teaching? You have to select a degree program and then you can only take classes that are needed for that degree program to qualify for aid. So if you are in a teaching degree and your teaching degree does not have hair cutting in there, a hair cutting class in there, and you want to take a hair cutting class, you can take it, but we can't include those credits in your financial aid eligibility. Okay, so your financial aid eligibility is only based on classes that you are taking for your specific degree program that you have declared as your major. Next slide, please. So what does it mean by an eligible program versus an ineligible? Most of our programs at HCC are called eligible programs, which means that you can enroll in that program and you can get financial aid. But we do have some very short term certificate programs that are not long enough to qualify for financial aid, such as our forensic accounting um, or our RN to paramedic program or our, our commuted tomography program. Those are some examples of programs that are too short qualify for financial aid. The federal government requires a program to be a certain length in order to qualify for financial aid. So you can check with your advisor, you can check with financial aid. If you're gonna be doing a short-term program, make sure you um, check with us first. All of our associate degree programs are eligible for aid. Most of our one-year certificates are eligible. It's just the really short-term programs that may not be eligible for financial aid. Next slide, please. So what's going to happen is when you apply for financial aid and then start enrolling in your classes, you're going to go through something called course validation. We're going to make sure that the classes are applying to your degree. If for some reason, one or more of your classes doesn't appear to be applying to your degree program, you're going to get a course alert communication. To clear that up, go, to, go see your academic advisor, sit down with them, go through your program, and sometimes they can use something called a course substitution, where they can approve that course to be applied to your program, and then it will be included in your financial aid. So that's called the course validation process. Next slide, please. A lot of programs in, them, in, them, in and of themselves have specific program eligibility requirements. For example, a federal Pell Grant 
it's only available for undergraduate students who have never completed a bachelor's degree. So in order for you to qualify for Pell is certain income requirements, um, certain um, uh, enrollment status requirements, such as full-time, half-time, three-quarter time, full-time, uh, and also you cannot reach your lifetime eligibility. So Pell only allows you to receive grant funding from the Pell Grant Program up to a total of 12 full-time semesters, which is up to six years. Once you reach that limit, you can't, you can never receive Pell Grants again. So make sure that you're not using all your Pell Grant eligibility at a two year school if you plan on going forward to get a bachelor's degree program. Okay, so once you reach that lifetime limit, you cannot get any Pell Grants. Once you reach a bachelor's degree, you cannot qualify for any more Pell Grants. A supplemental uh, educational opportunity grant is only uh, available to students who are eligible for a Pell Grant. And it needs to go to the highest need students. So usually only our students with a zero EFC, meaning they're full Pell eligible, those are the ones that qualify for our SEOG grant. And then we have work study. Work study is a wonderful program that allows students to get jobs on and off campus and work and get paid while you're going to school. Some students will see work study on their award letter. If you are interested in work study and it's not on your award letter, just contact us and we will see if you're eligible. If you're eligible for work study, we have numerous fairs, job fairs, that allow you to come and look at opportunities both on campus with our HCC departments or off campus with either community service organizations or for profit organizations. And um, we pay very well, actually. If you want to get a position on campus or with a community service organization, we pay students $11 an hour. Um, if you are um, in a certain degree program in which you want to get a job that pertains to your degree so you can get some training in that profession while you're going to school, we have opportunities with small businesses all over Houston that allows you to get placed with a business that is within your degree program, and you get you can work and get paid fifteen dollars an hour. So check with the financial aid office. The next job fair is September twenty second. Uh, it's a virtual fair, so you don't have to leave your home. You can just log in and attend, um, and you'll be matched up with opportunities that fit you for working while you're going to school. And then there's student loan programs. Student loan programs are what I call last resort options. If you get enough grant money to pay for your classes and pay for your books and supplies, don't take unnecessary loan debt that you have to pay back later. Student loans will have to be paid back later, but don't take it unless you absolutely need it. Um, and also don't, don't take too much at the undergraduate level or at the um, community college level, because in a lot of cases, going to the four year institutions costs a lot more than the community college. So if you need student loans, save them for the four year university. Uh, if you need them at the four year university, don't take them out if you don't need them to pay for your costs here at the, the two year community college. And then we also have Texas state grant programs. Um, our undocumented students are eligible for our TEOG and TPEG grant programs through the Texas State Agency. Um, and if you're eligible, you will get an award on your financial aid award letter. Um, however, the TEOG grant program requires an additional form. It's really easy to do. You get a communication saying, click on this link, fill out the form. And the form just says that um, you uh, are eligible because you have not been convicted of possessing drugs or selling drugs. So if you have, then you won't be, you won't qualify for TEOG, but this form uh, collects that information required by the state so that we can go ahead and disperse your, your state grant award. So make sure you do all the appropriate forms needed if you get awarded that grant money. And it's quite a bit of grant money, so you don't want to let that pass you by. Next screen, please. Now, again, Financial aid is about attaining a credential, getting a certificate or getting a degree. You have to progress 
in order to receive your aid, retain your aid, um, and have the aid completely cover you. If you get your financial aid and then you stop attending or you withdraw, we may be required to recalculate your eligibility for the semester. So for example, if you're attending right now, we're going to disperse your aid in the next couple of weeks to your to your account and then anything that's left over after your tuition and fees are covered we're going to refund that money to you okay to use for um, other educational costs like travel uh, room and board books and supplies and things like that if you withdraw before the 60 percent of the semester like if you withdraw the day after you get your financial aid we're going to have to recalculate your eligibility and we'll have to return some of that money to the government. In doing that, it might cause a balance to appear on your account. You will be responsible for that balance or else you can't enroll in future sessions. OK, very important. Uh, make sure that you um, talk to financial aid before you withdraw from your classes or before you stop attending so that you can know how it will affect your financial aid. We don't want you to be blocked from attending future classes. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, again, in order for you to retain financial aid from semester to semester, you have to be meeting satisfactory academic progress. What that means is every time you start taking a class, you need to finish that class and successfully pass that class with a C or better. If you do not pass the class, the C or better, or you stop attending or withdraw, it will affect your financial aid for the future. Okay, we will have to look at your eligibility and we run the SAP process at the end of every semester. And because our semesters are so close together, one ends and a new one starts, you don't get a whole lot of warning if you um, lose your financial aid eligibility, okay? The first semester you're not needing SAP, we're gonna put you on warning. So we do give you a warning. We do tell you that your financial aid's in jeopardy. You need to finish the classes that you start, okay? Um, but after a warning period, if you're still not meeting SAP, you will lose your eligibility. If you lose your eligibility, you do have the option to appeal based on special circumstances. Next slide, please. So in order to um, meet satisfactory academic progress, we have a policy that's out on our website. And this is what our policy says. These, 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 this policy is set by federal government. Our, our United States Congress set up these rules. Okay, so you have to maintain a 2.0 GPA. That's why getting a C or better in every one of your classes is so important. You have to complete and pass 67% of the classes you attempt. That's why withdrawals, if you just stop attending, are going to affect your satisfactory academic progress. You also have to complete your degree or certificate within 150% of the minimum number of hours required to graduate. So if you are in an associate's degree that requires 60 credits to graduate, then we're going to give you up to 90 credits to complete that degree. That's one and a half percent, um, or I should say 150 percent, one and a half times the normal rate. Okay. So if you're in a if you're an associate's degree, 60 credits you need to graduate, we will give you financial aid up to 90 credits. And that includes credits you transfer in from other colleges. And that includes credit you you finished with us ten years ago, twenty years ago. We have to count, we have to count any and every class you ever took with us, and any and every class you ever transferred in to us, in meeting that um, calculation. Next slide, please. So if you do end up losing your financial aid because you had um, something happened in your life. We understand life happens uh, and life has happened a lot for our students because of COVID-19. Uh, so if life happens and you have to withdraw or stop attending, you lose your financial aid eligibility, you can appeal. 
But that appeal has to be based on extenuating circumstances. And you have to be able to provide us documentation to prove those extenuating circumstances. So with extenuating circumstances and documentation to support it, we can allow you to co continue getting financial aid, even though you're not meeting SAP, okay? So that's why we have an appeal option. And there's a form you have to fill out. You have to attach your documentation, and then we will review it. And if you meet the federal requirements, we will let you continue getting aid, even though you're not meeting SAP. Next slide, please. Okay, so these are the things that look like that could possibly be extenuating circumstances. Injury or illness, loss of a relative, family emergency, natural disaster, or unexpected disruption. COVID is a good example of that. Uh, Job-related disruptions, um, any kind of learning disability that um, you um, are working on getting assistance with. You lost your transportation, um, you lost your childcare, uh, for your for your children, so on and so forth. So there's a lot of things that can be an extenuating circumstance. What is not considered an extenuating circumstance? Not liking your professor. That's not an extenuating circumstance. You disagree with the course. Um, you didn't try hard enough. Um, you didn't take things seriously. Um, you you have a prior circumstance that you didn't correct it. You just continued to ignore it. Um, so, so on and so forth. So there are certain things that we consider that are not extenuating circumstances when it comes to a SAP appeal. To avoid SAP altogether, to avoid having to appeal, take the classes that you can handle. Take classes, uh, don't take too many. Um, take the amount of courses that you think you can handle um, and finish the courses you start. You, and if you're having difficulty in, in any of your courses, go get some help. We have wonderful tutoring here at HCC. Uh, we have a great counseling department that you can go see if you're having some difficulties. So seek assistance before withdrawing or stop before the, um, you take the worst case scenario and that is to withdraw or stop attending. Next slide, please. One of the most important things to succeeding in a class is having the tools you need to be successful. Those tools include textbooks, supplies, um, other things that you might need that can help you. If you're if you don't if you're not good in math, the teacher tells you that there's some uh, technology or some online um, available resources, and you have to pay for those available resources. Financial aid is available to help with books and supplies. Um, in order for you to uh, use financial aid to help with those books and supplies, you have to get your financial aid applications and documentation done well in advance of the start of the semester. That's why the earlier you apply, the best uh, in terms of helping you succeed in your classes. Get your documentation done early. Get your financial aid applications done early. Um, if you have all your financial aid in place uh, prior to July 15th for the fall semester or prior to July, uh, December 1st for the spring or April 15th for the summer, and if your financial aid is higher than your bill, so if, if, if you have financial aid that exceeds the cost, what you're being billed for, and if you if you register prior to these dates, you can use something called an opt-out method. You will get an email if you qualify for opting out, and we will give you your book and supply funds in advance so that you can purchase your books and supplies outside of the HCC Campus Bookstore. If your financial aid exceeds your bill, you can use those funds to go to the HCC campus bookstore and get your books and supplies. Our HCC campus uh, bookstore provides you with 99% of what you need to be successful in your classes. If you don't want to purchase through our HCC bookstore, you can go and opt out and get your funds in advance. And we usually provide them about uh, 10 to 14 days before the start of classes. We will send you a refund. 
you can use that refund to go get your books and supplies somewhere else. We send you lots of communications to tell you about this. When it comes to financial aid, pay attention to your emails. Pay attention to your HCC emails. Pay attention to the email address that you put on your FAFSA, because that's where we, we will be sending all your communications to tell you what's available to you when it comes to financial aid. Next slide, please. Here's an example, and again, you have copies of all these um, slides that you're seeing. This shows you what it looks like if you want to take advantage of the book advance. The fall book advance process is over. That only happens uh, for a two week period in July, but for the, um, for the spring semester, pay attention to your emails uh, and we will open up book advance process uh, on December 1st and you'll have until December 15th to request a book advance for the spring semester if you want to use it. If you don't want to use the HCC bookstore, but you want to go get your books and supplies elsewhere. Next screen, please. Um, if you, if you uh, miss out on the window for the book advance, don't worry, you can still use your financial aid to go get your books and supplies at the HCC bookstore. Now, if you don't want to do that, and you miss the window to get a, to opt out and get a book advance, then you can pay for your books and supplies yourself and just wait for your financial aid refund to reimburse yourself. Next slide, please. And that's everything I wanted to tell you about today. Um, I know I gave you a lot of information. Financial aid can be overwhelming. It can be confusing. That's why we have amazing staff on our call center, amazing staff in our Zoom lobby, amazing staff at our campuses. They're there to help you through all this, help guide you, help um, if you're having difficulty with any of the applications, with any of the forms, that's what they're here for. We have absolutely amazing staff. Um, so at this point in time, I'm gonna take any questions you have. Uh, thank you, Ms. Yellen, for sharing this information to our students. I think our students appreciate that you come forward with those questions, those answers that they may have. And just to do a brief recap, as uh, Ms. Joellen mentioned, financial aid, it's a process that has multiple steps and multiple departments. Also, financial aid has an array of services that you could access from emergency assistance to financial literacy to understanding repayment options. And our financial aid focus is to provide students with the best customer service through our different channels that we have. So uh, also, uh, we completely understand that it's a lot of information to unpack in just one session. Sometimes we have multiple sessions for financial aid, even for training. So we understand it's a lot of information, but it's important that you guys know uh, what's provided uh, through our financial aid department. And one more thing, again, only general questions will be answered. Unfortunately, we can go over specific situations because of FERPA and privacy rules that we have in the college. So let's go ahead and get started uh, with those questions. Um, what the first question that we got is, if we choose to get the HER fund uh, refund to us, are we obligated to use the, the funds for our tuition? No, you can use it for whatever you need it for. That's the government specifically told colleges and universities, this, these funds are for emergency needs. Uh, emergency educational needs, and that could be child care, that could be health care, that could be transportation, that could be technology, uh, Wi-Fi, um, pay your rent, buy your food. Uh, there's so many things that um, students need funding right now to help them stay in school. So it's very important for you to know that this is your funding. Once you request the money and you can decide I want it. I want it put on my account. No, I want it refunded directly to me. Even if you're on a payment plan and owe money right now, uh, you can ask for it to be refunded directly to you, and we'll just bypass your student account and give it directly to you. Now, you need to know though, if you owe funds to the college, your schedule could be dropped. Um, so make sure that your schedule is secured by either financial aid funding that's going to cover you. 
uh, you sign up for a payment plan. Maybe you're a veteran and you have VA benefits coming. As long as the college knows how it's going to be paid, your your schedule will stay intact. But if you have a balance due and we don't know how it's going to be paid, then you need to know that you could lose your schedule. Um, so make sure that you know that you're covered, your bill is covered before you ask for funds to be refunded directly to you. Now you could have it go directly to you and then turn around and pay your payment plan with it. That's your decision. Um, you decide how you're going to use the funds. We don't ask you, we don't track it. You don't have to give us documentation to tell us how you're going to use it. This will not show up your, on your 1098T at the end of the school year. It will not show up. You do not have to report this on your taxes. Um, this is your funding to help you stay in school. The, the key about emergency funding right now is there's a huge pandemic going on. COVID has not gone away. It's still out there. It's still affecting people's lives. People are still getting sick. Um, we want to make sure that we have funding available to you so you can stay in school should something happen uh, while you're going to school. Thank, thank you for the answer, Joelle. And our second question that we have, where can I find the link to apply for HERF? So um, there's a couple ways, actually. There's three primary ways you can get help. Go to our website, click on emergency aid, scroll down to the HERF 3, uh, click on the plus key, open it up. It'll give you instructions on how to access it. You should have gotten an email. If you're eligible to request these funds, you should have an email um, that you received either uh, yesterday, the day before that, or today. So emails keep going out to students who are eligible. Um, if you have an email, the instructions are on the email. Or if you still don't know what to do, contact us, call us, visit our Zoom lobby, go in if, if one of the campuses is close to you and you're, you know, have an ability to drive to the campus, you, you could do a, that as a last resort option. Call us, contact our Zoom lobby. If you're still having trouble, um, we can, through our Zoom lobby, we can have you show your screen and we can walk you through on how to do it. We've been doing that for two days straight. So uh, we're more than happy to help you through the process. Thank you for that. Our next question, and I try to rephrase it because it was pretty specific. <laughs> so what circumstances could prevent students to receive her, her funding resulting in ineligibility? The only eligibility requirement is that you have to be currently attending a class, any class. Okay, that's the only requirement. You have to be currently attending the fall semester, not enrolled, but attending. Okay, so if you are enrolled in classes that haven't started yet, you will not be able to access the form until we do the second round. So we're in our first round of delivering the funds. So this round is from September 1st to September 10th. And if you're in classes, you should have an email that tells you how to access the request form. If you don't, if your classes don't start until September 20th or September 24th or October 1st, you'll be access, you'll be able to access the money in the second round. This, and on the website, on that HERF website that I just talked about, it'll show you all the dates and all the rounds that we're going to be delivering these funds. So if you haven't started classes yet, then look for the second round in October. And that second round is, is about a two week period in October that you'll be able to request the funds. Um, but the only eligibility is that you have to be, your class has to have started already and you have to be actually taking the class. Thank you for that, uh, Ms. Joelle. And the next question that we have, uh, if students have a balance to pay, can they still receive a refund for her funding? Um, so if you, add, it, it, it appears, it looks like we're going to be giving about $1,000 per student. So if you requested the funds, um, you're going to get about $1,000. We don't have the exact amount yet, but it's, um, it's probably going to be very close to about $1,000 per student. Uh, if you owe $500 and you ask for the HER funds to be applied to your account, we're going to put that $1,000 on your account like a payment. We're going to pay for that $500 balance due. 
anything left over, you're going to get in a refund. All right, so you're going to get the full thousand dollars. Pay your balance first. Anything left over, you'll get in a refund. Make sure that if you're asking for the her funds, that you set up a refund pre preference. And we put the instructions on how to set up a refund preference on the email we sent you. It's on our website. And it's also on the form itself. So when you request the money on the form, the refund preference instructions are on there too. Next question. So if a student buys a book from the bookstore and they paid out of pocket, will they receive a refund through financial aid? So if you bought them yourself, okay, and your financial aid is greater than your bill, when we start dispersing, we don't start dispersing until after the OE date, okay? The date of official record for the fall semester for the regular term, that means that anybody who's in a 16 week semester, um, that is September 7th. After that, faculty have three or four days to get their rosters in. And our registrar's office will run a process. And anybody who didn't show up for classes are going to be removed from their schedule. We have to wait for that process to finish before we can start dispersing aid. So we won't start dispersing aid to students until the week of the 15th of September. So once we start dispersing aid, if your financial aid is greater than your bill, you're going to get a refund for the rest of the money. So what you use that refund for is your decision. It's your choice. But you get that refund if you choose to reimburse yourself for your books. Great. You can just reimburse yourself. If you put your books on a credit card, go ahead and use that refund to pay for the credit card. Uh, but it's your choice. Uh, you'll get that refund no matter what. Thank you for that next question. And I like this one. How could I check the different positions for the work study program? Excellent question. Excellent, excellent. We have a work study page on the website that kind of explains how the work study process is. So if you have work study on your award, you should have been getting email communications explaining about how to secure a position uh, through our job fair, um, through our career hub. If you if you're interested in working while you're going to school, make sure you go to our career services career hub and set up a profile. Once you set up a profile and upload your resume, you're going to start getting access to work study positions both on and off campus. We have a job fair coming up for work study on September 22nd. Register for that job fair. It's a virtual job fair. We're going to match you up explain to you how you get access to different jobs. There's many, many job openings right now for work study, both on and off campus. Take advantage of it. Thank you for that, Ms. Joelle. Next one. When will disbursement dates start for the fall semester? We just finished sending out email communications that explain to you all of the different disbursement dates, depending on which sessions you're in. So, not all not all classes have started for the fall. We have later start sessions. Uh, we have early start sessions. Some some already started um, before uh, August 23rd. Um, and so depending on when your classes start or will start uh, will depend on when your aid will disperse. And that communication we just started sending out today explains that, explains when you will get your disbursements. We also have a web page that talks about disbursement dates for the fall. So go out and look at our disbursement schedule. Um, now, disbursement and refund are two different things. You need to realize that disbursement means we apply your financial aid as a payment to your account. Refund happens only if you have more financial aid than your bill. Um, refunds come from excess financial aid. So if you owe a thousand dollars on your bill, and you got two thousand dollars in grant money from financial aid. Thousand of it will play, be applied to your bill and pay for that bill. Other thousand will be refunded to you. Uh, disbursement happens first. Refund ha happens second. Refund will not happen the same day you're dispersed. We only refund once a week. So if we disperse you on Monday, most likely you'll get refund on Wednesday or Thursday of that week. 
Thank you for that great information, students. You need to uh, check your uh, emails and, and the different websites information that we have. Next question, and it's a two part question. Why do students receive an email that their courses need to be validated when they register and the course is applicable to their degree program and the course isn't a retake? The second part is, will students be notified immediately if a course they are interested in is ineligible if they plan to use financial aid? Um, excellent, excellent questions. Thank you for asking that question, because uh, that is a question I'm sure there are a number of other students thinking about. Um, when we run the course validation process, it's a systematic process. So it's based on how the courses are set up in the system. Uh, systems are not 100%. Technology is never 100% accurate, unfortunately, we wish it was. It's probably, when it comes to course validation, it's probably 95% accurate. So if you pretty sure, if you think that course is going to apply to your program, contact your academic advisor. They will review it and then they will place a, a check mark on there uh, so that it shows up in financial aid as valid. Now, the moment they validate that class, doesn't come to financial aid automatically. You have to run a process uh, that, I think that process runs every half hour that notifies us that that course is now valid. But we don't recalculate financial aid until once a day, and it happens in the evening. Financial aid runs by batch processes. Everything that happens in financial aid, because we are such a la large college, we have a, hundreds of thousands of students, we run our processes in the evening so it doesn't slow down the system during the day while we while we um, help students. So if you validate your class today, financial aid won't recalculate till that night. And then you'll get a new award notification the next day. Thank you for that, Joel. And we have a bunch of questions. Uh, Next we do, and, and I just need yeah. to let you know, Armando, that um, I've got four more minutes um, yeah, to I know. questions. Unfortunately, well, last... <laughs> I, I would stay longer if I didn't have sure. a one o'clock meeting. Yeah, we, but, we thank yeah. you. We appreciate your time. So uh, last question. Um, once we get our financial aid dispersed, how do we go? How do we go about making payments? So. Maybe it's something about how payments work or refunds work. Okay, so if your financial aid isn't enough to cover the bill, okay, if your bill is higher than your financial aid, you should have already started getting communications about that, uh, that give you the option to either pay it yourself uh, in full, the remaining amount that financial aid doesn't cover, or sign up for a payment plan. Um, so you should have been getting communications about that. Uh, once your financial aid disperses and pays for your tuition, if it doesn't cover everything, you should be getting a bill. Um, or you can just go out and check your student account through My Eagle online. You go to your billing account and you can see how much is left over and you can either pay it in full or sign up for a payment plan for the rest of it. Thank you so much, Joel, and uh, you have answered most of our questions with clarity and our students appreciate you uh, explaining those questions and giving great answers. Uh, also, we would like to thank to our students that joined today. We hope you have a great semester and uh, we're going to email the presentation uh, for you for you guys so you can see and review the presentation as well. Thank you, Ms. Joel, for being here. Thank you to our students and remember, you're going to get Eagle points for this. Have a great day and we'll Excellent. see you soon, guys. Thank bye -bye. you. Thank Appreciate you, you all. Thank you, Ms. Rowland. All right. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye.